The next uh, speaker, final speaker, is Jed uh, Weisberg. Uh, Jed is the medical director for the Kaiser Permanente Hospital System in charge of the quality program and is going to talk about some things that uh, we've been doing on sepsis. Jed? Thanks, George. Hearing about the kind of improvement and the quality that's possible just gives me goosebumps. And the idea of replicability says that the opportunity is there for the taking at each and every one of the hospitals in America. The final clinical example we're dealing with this morning is sepsis. Sepsis, as you've already heard, is common, not well recognized, very, very serious, and results in upwards of 200,000 deaths a year in the U.S. We did an analysis of the results of our hospital care in our Northern California region. Ideally, the result would be a happy, happy, healthy, functional patient going back to join their family, living their life. But sadly, sometimes the product of a hospital stay is a death. That should not be covered up. That needs to be examined. And just as Justine was talking about examining the product of hospital care when it's an infection. We did an analysis of 100 consecutive deaths in all of our hospitals and looked at the causes. And overwhelmingly, the cause of death that we felt was preventable or largely preventable was related to infection. And all too often, it was related to sepsis. So what is sepsis? Sepsis is a condition usually coming in a person who presents to the emergency department or the urgent care clinic, feeling poorly for one to, se to several days, generally as a result of a bacterial infection that in certain cases progresses to a state of inflammation throughout the body, which can lead all too often to a state of vascular collapse, organ failure, and death. Just like in the field of trauma surgery, in sepsis is the concept of the golden hour. If we can appropriately identify and start interventions before that cascade starts that leads to organ failure and a prolonged and rocky hospital stay, we can oftentimes get a person back on track, reverse the abnormalities in the body that the infection leads to, and, and cure them. So, like uh, Justine, we looked to the IHI for a campaign they started collecting bits of medical information that had been gathered since the late 90s and the early 2000s and codified in a set of guidelines in the Surviving Sepsis Campaign. We enrolled our hospitals in that kind of collaborative effort and institutionalized and systematized the care starting right at the earliest point that we have an interaction with the patient, at the point of emergency department triage, we've instructed our nurses and clerks to recognize those signs of impending physiologic failure, to notate in the electronic medical record what's happening, to get the appropriate decision support, to make sure that the blood tests are ordered, which when returned rapidly, first in queue, can let the doctors know that indeed they're dealing with a real case of sepsis that requires that aggressive intervention, fluids, antibiotics, drugs to keep the blood pressure up. In doing so, and in getting a person quickly treated and transferred to an intensive level of care, we can generally interrupt that serious and often lethal cascade of organ failure. In doing so, in doing our analysis of hospital mortality, we realized that while sepsis was accounting for only 2.7% of our hospital admissions, it was fully 25% of our hospital deaths. So this gets to George's statistics. We can intervene in a very small number of people and make a huge difference in the percent of deaths. The actual mortality in patients admitted with a diagnosis of sepsis compared to people admitted with all other hospital diagnoses is 11-fold greater, a ripe opportunity for medical intervention. We also did this through systemization of care, forming of care teams, training, consciousness raising, skill building in our staff in the ERs, both our nurses, our doctors, our pharmacists, our materials managers, our environmental services staff, all came together and we would call a sepsis alert just as some hospitals call a code blue when somebody has a myocardial infarction. Having that sepsis alert team show up, each person knowing their role, knowing what their colleague was supposed to be doing, and knowing that the shared goal was to improve a patient's physiologic status as indicated on that algorithm, enabled rapid, appropriate care with accompanying measurements so that we could feed that information back to those frontline teams and let them see where they succeeded, where they failed, and how they might improve. 
Doing so has already reduced our sepsis from mortality in our Northern California hospitals by 40 percent. The rest of our hospitals are following right along closely, and it's one of the great successes in melding medical science with the science of improvement and teams. Thank you.